downtown and on the waterfront. I mean building for our families that are here now, so that we don't have children growing up in a, a six-person, one-bedroom apartment. And uh, I'd love to follow up with you a little bit more after this to talk about your career as well. Thank you very much. Yes. In the lot, yeah. in the lot that you said at the back where the wetlands are, um, some of the uh, things that they were that I'm concerned is that the conservation of the forest, and if that should be included in your study uh, for some green areas and um, you know the conservation direction of the um, uh, education. Um, obviously, I wouldn't like to see a lot of houses there if you want to cut trees and then um, just uh, hurt nature that we are so proud of here, especially in woods. Um, so maybe you should consider that. And then obviously green um, areas to recycle and all that green conversation that I'm sure you are aware of. <coughs> Following up on what this lady just mentioned, have any environmental impact studies, thorough ones, been done? Because some of the proposals or the extent of the development, and who knows who the developer is going to be, what they're going to put in, what impact is that going to have on the wildlife in Lynn Woods Reservation, which is abutting this complex, I'll call it? The bird life, the animal life, the streams, the ponds. Has any in-depth, serious study, independent study been done? Or is it just from your perspective? Oh, well, that's OK. We're going to be 50 feet back from the trees and all this stuff. Um, if, I'm, if I'm sounding critical, I am. No, I, I don't think we've seen and existing environmental impact study document. That um, might be a very good thing to do before you go to the next step. A very thorough, independent team. We, uh, as a part of this process too, with the environmental impact studies, traffic, school-aged children, all of those issues, we will not be able to give satisfactory answers. But one of the things we can do through this study is actually outline in the zoning recommendations the types of studies that should occur that would be likely um, paid for and supported by a development as opposed to the city having to do that. No, do it ahead of time so that that will give prospective developers the knowledge that, okay, you can't expand past a certain point because of the impact on the animals, the bird life, the waters, the trees, the woods. It's just not a bunch of trees. And I think it might be very prudent to get your homework done on this before the next meeting. Not just leave it to a prospective developer who's going to pay the highest price for this acreage. I'll have a conversation with our environmental planners in our agency and see what best practices occur around environmental <coughs> impact studies prior to development. I just want to speak about the back part of the single family. Everyone's concerned about the impact of the children in the schools and everything. What if it were just a 55 and over development? We have one in the city of Lynn right now that's perfect. Uh, it's just not enough. There's never any openings. You can't get in. A 55 and over would not impact the schools. It wouldn't impact all the traffic as much as everybody's concerned about. That could be perfect from the back part of the back. Could the uh, eminent domain play any role here? Uh, but not probably likely. I, I don't think that there would be a public entity that would probably be willing to take it for a public use. Um, maybe a portion of it, if there were like a trail connection to make or something for easement, so that could be taken by eminent domain. But it's not likely that an entire property of this scale, when no no public needs have been already identified, is good. Yes. Is there a way to get the uh, partners to uh, pay for the demo demolition of the hospital? No. No way at all. Um, I 
can't speak for them. I was my feelings that it's not likely at this time. So I won't sell it until they tear it down. They can maintain it, they can pay taxes on it, and they can keep it maintained forever. Well, we'll take it down as a you don't pay any taxes. They have to pay taxes if there's nothing in there. They only pay. They only don't pay taxes when they're uh, a hospital. They're closing it. Yes. As for the medical building, um, the graph you showed it, it looks like a similar footprint to the building that's there now. Do you know if that's going to be uh, the case, and if the rest? Because right now, behind the medical village part is this parking lot. I'm wondering if that's going to remain the same or if they're going to build on that lot more. So, the simple foot, footprint we show, we have shown in the diagram is consistent with the site plan that we've seen. Um, behind that building footprint and in front of that building footprint on the Linfield side would be parking areas to support the building. Uh, so the, the building, the current building actually sits about where the, the, the footprints of two existing buildings are. Just to add to that, if I understand the plan, you're going to take down the two buildings that you're talking about, and they're going to take down the west office, the medical facility, that, and the remaining part of the hospital is going to stay. But those three There's sections a, are coming down for the medical. Correct. There's a portion, a wing of the existing hospital west wing right. that would yes, also be removed as part of the site prep for the whole the medical building. Back. Yeah. 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 The form that we've had, so people could potentially, I guess, download it, write down, maybe scan it back and send it in to to, to our emails. Uh, we'll fi we'll figure out a way to make that happen and get the instructions. In. Other languages as well. Which other languages would you suggest? Spanish, German, Russian, all three most dominantly. What was the second? Cambodian, uh, Mai. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll inquire about that. I'll see what we can do. Yeah. Just, do, you, do you have an email uh, contact point right now and, a, and even a snail mail comment for contact for people that would like to send something? Yes. Um, let me see. Yeah, I'll I didn't put it on the slide. Um, so my email address, I'd like to take it down, is J Fiala, F as in Frank, I-A-L-A, -A -A, so Josh Fiala, my first initial and last name, at mapc.org. So that's my email. Um, our address is 60 Temple Place, Boston. Zero two one one one. Zip code. MAPC.org. Okay. And you could get all the information from the website as well. Thank you. Are there any other questions? We have ten minutes left of our time. If not, we respect the So I uh, have a question regarding the questions on the Lidfield Street property that concerns retail. As I recall, there were three uh, options. One was mixed use, uh, another was retail, and another was restaurants. First of all, restaurants, would that fall under a retail zoning? Is restaurants considered retail, or is that a separate uh, category? I think the way the zoning has it in Lynn today is uh, restaurants fall under food service establishments, mm -hmm. which are separate from retail. Okay. And then mixed use, in effect, is the same as retail. Is it not? I mean, you have residential, but you have retail on the on the ground floor. So yeah, mixed use 
the you the commercial uses of mixed use would be similar to retail or a food service establishment. Okay. And then uh, the question I have regarding retail is once you uh, change the zoning to enable retail, is it, this is sort of a hypothetical question, I understand, but in the future, you don't necessarily have total control uh, over what retail can go in there as long as it's meeting the zoning requirements. Is that not the case? Yeah, you, you could, um, ways to control retail involve things like design guidelines or design standards, which talk about the way it looks. You can also control retail through zoning by uh, placing square footage limits. So for example, retail under 50,000 square feet might be allowed as of right. Retail over that might be requiring a special permit. So that way you avoid or control uh, the allowance of big box retail stores, for example. But I, I'm thinking more in terms of any item, any sort of retail that would not be compatible with the family neighborhood. Uh, yeah, in the future, if you have retail is allowed, but you have somebody coming in with porn pornographic books, yeah. it's whatever it is. Those, those types of uses, which are um, typically seen in neighborhoods as negative, are, have their own use classifications in most zoning codes, and Lynn does as well. So um, any sexually oriented or related business would be have its own line item in these two, which would not be allowed under retail. All right. I, I, I guess uh, I would say, I'm not sure if those three questions that were consecutive in terms of the options, uh, if they didn't end up being a little inconsistent Partners isn't selling everything. They're keeping one building. So there's about five acres which would not be a part of one okay. partners. What are they doing specifically with that building? That's they're going to have the medical offices. Yes. Is there going to be a lockup in it? Is there going? Pardon me. I don't know. Is there going to be a psych ward in there? I don't know the specific program. You should find out before you do anything because if they're going to have, originally they were going to shut down the hospital and turn it into a psych ward with a lockup unit and move all the medical stuff. Up. Well, to save them. Now you're telling me that the, prop, the, build, the hospital proper is, is gone. Everything, the, the ER, the whole, everything that's there, it's gone. Correct? And, they, and they're keeping the one building. My concern is, apparently I've lost communication somewhere along the way, and I need to know, do they still intend to have psych ward in the building that they're keeping and if they are is it going to involve a lockup first of all there's no place for a psych ward you can you can throw a rock to shoemaker school and up and over the hill you're in with the other school and there's, and there's an elementary school right across the street so it says out, outpatient psychiatry what does that mean so outpatient, outpatient. Not inpatient. they're going to be at the bus stop they're going to be at gowdy park where they're going to be we, we can ask for more detailed descriptions. Yeah, I, we should really seriously look into that, okay? It's there now. But it is, it's a, uh, it's That's a what it's smaller facility. Yes. No, no, no. It's a smaller facility. So it yeah. would, well, it only, it only takes one or two of them to yeah. cause a problem in the neighborhood. I, I, it's a smaller facility that isn't fully dedicated to anyone. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.